Hey everybody, today we're back with another morph highlight. Today we're going to talk about the bamboo gene. Bamboo is a codominant gene, and it's probably my favorite codominant gene, at least right now. There are a lot of strengths to this gene. It is a very visually strong gene, but there are some drawbacks to this as well, um, and we'll get into that. So let's look at a basic bamboo. And right off the bat, you can see, I think, what I'm talking about. This, this looks like it could have maybe some enchi calico almost like a uh, not quite a vpi um, but that color stripping where it becomes more of a, a grayish earthy brown maybe a type of color basically it looks like maybe two or three genes combined and if that reminds you anything it should remind you of spider spider got very popular because it's one gene and it looks like it's a bunch of stuff it's very visually strong so is bamboo another strong um, example of a bamboo combo would be bamboo and the aforementioned spider. Bamboo and spider, depending on how you feel about it, is really good. They're both visually dominant and it creates a really cool snake. This one here has a little bit of extra stuff. It actually has calico as well as pastel and pin. Um, I actually kind of um, like the bamboo spider calico combos just in general. Um, they're really, really neat. If I ever had to make something with spider in it um, by choice, rather than more or less just having the gene in something that I already have, that would probably be what I want. So here's a normal bamboo calico spider. Usually I see them uh, as they grow out, they get more white coming up on their sides, um, but their tops and their heads hold their color and the pattern is really, really strong up there. So I always like that contrast. So if you get some really nice white um, almost stark white and then a lot of pattern that's some really good contrast you go from a, some really cool patterns to nothing it just it, it makes it stand out more i think here is my bamboo lemon blast anubis bamboo lemon blast is bamboo pinstripe and pastel you can see they've got this really nice yellow head the pattern is really cool and the sides coming up as well on him are just very calico-esque so you can see that bamboo has a lot going on for it. Obviously, it's not getting the white from the pinstripe or the pastel coming up. That is bamboo. Here are some of his little children. This one is a uh, bamboo pinstripe. I believe it is also pastel and fire or just fire. You're already starting to get hints of some of the drawbacks of bamboo. Here's another offspring of Anubis here. This is a bamboo mystic, possible fire, possible pinstripe possible pastel and we'll never know until we breed it someday i'm selling this one it's ready so that won't be my responsibility to find out this one is definitely bamboo and it's definitely mystic so there is both what you consider either a drawback or a plus of bamboo it's in the bell complex blue-eyed leucistic this is an all-white snake with blue eyes blue-eyed leucistics are one of the more sought after sold um snakes but they're all white and they have no pattern it's done from here i can't add pattern into this and if there is a way no one's found out yet and whenever that person does find out if they do at all they are going to be uh pretty wealthy saying that that an all white snake has no pattern is not always the case there are certain examples where a bell does show off pattern or show off a specific color and in some cases even on the ones where it's not supposed to you can see right there that there is a faint pattern on both sides. So here's a normal bamboo hatchling. I believe it's just a normal. Sometimes the pastels can throw you off and I'll know more as it sheds and gets a little bit older, although this is a pretty big, but it's hard to tell with bamboo pastel especially. In fact, one of the bigger ways to tell is when it's in pinstripe. That's, I don't know why, I think it's just because pinstripe is usually darker and it highlights that out of it, but bamboo pastel can be hard to tell. This one, however, is obviously a little bit different. This one here is what I'm pretty sure is a bamboo pastel fire. It's really washed out. And as I said, bamboo pastel is harder to tell, but bamboo fire lightens it up a bit and the two of them together is definitely gonna make a difference. So you can see a major difference between these two, obviously. So there are ways to influence the more stubborn bamboo gene, but I'm gonna show you some examples um, of how hard it is to mess with before we move back into some more cooler morphs. Moving on to what I would consider some of the weaknesses, 
of the bamboo. We're not gonna put any names in there because I don't wanna try and throw shade on people just because I don't like it. We said this last time. It's not even me saying that this is not a good snake. It's just, it's, I'm trying to show that bamboo, even though it's beautiful, can muddy up a lot quicker than other jeans. If you throw a bunch of jeans together, it creates a muddied pattern usually. You don't even know what you've got. Bamboo, it happens a little bit quicker because it looks like there's a lot going on with this snake, but there's only just one gene. So therefore, it's just gonna muddy that up, in my opinion, a little bit quicker. So here we've got a bamboo pinstripe pastel, much like this one, but we added calico spider and enchi. Now I previously said I like calico and spider in them, and I do like the lemon blast in them, but when you throw all that together and throw enchi on top of that, I mean, it's debatable, but this, it kind of just, it looks like it's a little bit dirty on the top. It's, it's got barely any pattern to it. It's more or less pure white on the sides, most of the way up, 75% of it. And then the top of it is just dirty. This is a powerful breeder, especially being 100% head pie and 100% head hypo, but it in and of itself is muddied. I don't even know where to begin thinking about all that stuff. I mean, I, I believe that, that spider calico bamboo are in all this because of how washed out it is, but then the pinstripe is not quite showing. The, the Enchi, like, there's no pattern to show with what Enchi does with it. it blows up the pattern anyway. Um, pastel further lightens it up, which I'm honestly becoming more of a fan of getting pastel out of these and a lot of these combos. I like pastel. Um, but in some of these combos, it doesn't make too much sense. I honestly almost feel like a darker approach because these are can be lighter snakes when mixed, mixed with stuff. So maybe trying to keep some darkness in there because as you muddy it up, it becomes a little bit harder to see what you've got. With, you know, if you do GHI or Bongo, maybe those will accentuate some of those bamboo looks. So here's another one. This is a super pastel spider inchy orange dream bamboo fire. This one's very light. You've got some line, very light line down the middle. It's not that I'm saying I don't like this or the other one. It's just you're taking away that pattern by getting a little too light. Now, where's the happy medium in there? Because I just said I like the whites on the sides. It's because I like the stark difference between the whites on the side and the powerful pattern on the back. The pattern on the back is very weak and fainted here too. If that pattern was darker, and stronger, I would, I think it would completely flip how I feel about this. And there's nothing wrong with this snake. This snake is actually, I like it actually, but nobody can argue the fact that it has very little pattern. Might as well be a bell with a stripe down the middle. So those are just some of the weaknesses that you have. Again, when I say weakness, I don't mean that these snakes are ugly. I, I really like bamboo and I even, the last two I use, use as examples of weaknesses. I think they're cool. It's just, let's be realistic here. That's, it's hard to work with and, and what you're looking at. It's hard to, to, to even determine what's actually in there. Going back to some of the more cool things that you can do with bamboo. I think that Enchi is a strong contender, especially when you get like a super Enchi. So super Enchi bamboo, you get this right here. So it's a little bit different take on the pattern. The head stamp on super Enchis especially, um, Enchis in general usually have, sometimes have a cool head stamp, but the super Enchis really do have a cool head stamp and this works well with that. I think that it's almost very clown-esque and it has that color pattern um, of the bamboo, almost like an inverted color. So I think this is another powerful combo. The bongo bamboo is also another powerful combo, I think, because um, it keeps that darkness into the back of it. This one here has a paradox on it that is not part of the uh, gene at all here at play. You see it on its eye and a little one near its tail inside. The stripe on the back, everything about this, this is kind of what I'm looking for. You can see how it's a little muted on the sides, but the stripe down the middle has a lot of pattern to it. It's powerful. To me, it's important to have a contrast difference, to have the, as if I haven't said that enough, it's, if you're gonna have the, the sides here, as you can see, white. But then this, there's no mistaking this. It's not bled into it. It's a little bit of a lighter color, but it stands out. I like that contrast. You have that contrast here, although it's not stark, stark white, but you see it faded on the side. Now, as these snakes get older, the bamboos, that white creeps on up. So there's a good chance that that snake, when it is full grown, will have that nice, cool back stripe but this on the sides. And that is where I think bamboo starts to shine is when it shows off its stripe. I don't have it, but genetic stripe and stuff like that. So anything that has a strong stripe down it, I think is highly underrated. It really calls out to, to, to what's going on down the, the 
back of the snake. And let's face it, if you're looking at a snake in this regard, that's what you're seeing first. Is that part of it. You're not seeing the sides right off the bat, even though I do like that. That was what stands out the most. So I think it's important that that part is the thing that has the most personality to it. And then of course I had to bring clown into this because I love clown as well. And that'll probably be our for our next session, hint, hint. So this one here, leopard, spot nose, bamboo, clown. I think leopard and bamboo go pretty well together in general, but when you get clown in there, and especially when you get spot nose in there, you get that different colored pattern to it, that unique bamboo color. Not quite exantic, but its own little unique thing. I, I, I don't know why, but I love the name bamboo too. It's not a piece of bamboo, but it just seems so appropriately zen and unique to what it is. So I think there's a lot of personality, a lot of pattern to this. If the parts that are dark could be darker though, that would be outstanding in this snake. Here is a bamboo banana calico pastel clown. I talked about banana last time. I'm talking about bamboo now. Why not just mash them together, especially with the clown, which I'm talking about next time. Banana, bamboo, I think work pretty good together because it gives that unique color without really too much taking away from anything else. And it gets like a very unique yellowish color to it. It's very light typically as most of these snakes are, but um, this one's pretty cool and unique. Again, the stripe down the middle, but then again, clown seems to work with just about anything. Maybe that's unfair. <laughs> To say you know hey you're gonna just show clown in everything that you like um and that just makes it look good sure i like clown anyway i know i sound like i'm contradicting myself sometimes um saying you know it would be cool if you had a little bit darker there and i'm sure you could find a gene that would do that um you know why not just take the bamboo out and it would have a lot more stark colors and that's fine too um that's a different snake though this is uh, kind of almost like a more subtle version of the G-Stripe Clown we showed, ironically, from Royal Constrictors. This one is also from Royal Constrictors. Feels like it's kind of almost the same snake, but this one is a little bit more subtle, a little bit more relaxed. I feel like bam bamboo is more like a zen, relaxed, chill snake. So therefore, that's why I think it's kind of appropriately named. I look at it and I feel just relaxed. It's not like all out there in your face with electric designs and stuff down it. Um, which is fine. Um, it's one of the reasons I like it. It stands out, it's unique, it's different. Here's Bamboo Red Stripe Clown. See, this is where I'm talking about more of a contrast. You have that cool clown pattern, you have the bamboo uniqueness, but then the red stripe, which I hope to get into soon as well, much like I hope to get into almost everything, but that darkens that stripe right down the middle. It gives me everything I want in the snake because it has contrast from a very light side to a more dark, bold, but not quite dark black. It's still subtle in its own way, but it stands very strongly apart. It's stripe, probably more so than anything I've shown so far. This is really cool. Um, and it's only clown, bamboo, and red stripe. So I think that that is honestly a building block for something for bamboo, just looking at this alone anyway. But those are probably my favorite ones with bamboo. Bamboo clown, I think with recessives, that's the way you work this into recessives. I think that that's where you get the most power out of it. You notice I didn't show any bamboo pied. I wanna pivot back to some of the points that are a little bit harder to work with. So here we are with a bamboo pie bulb. It is a visual pied with bamboo in it. The head clown that it says it has here, or maybe has here, has no effect on this. As you can see, you get a mostly white snake with a couple little spots on it. Pied naturally just brings in a lot of white and randomness to it, but the bamboo just really just blows that up where you're gonna get a white snake typically with either the head will be just the pattern or it, you know, you might have a couple spots every now and again, but or you're gonna get an all white snake and it won't be a bamboo bell. It'll be a bamboo pie. It won't be bamboo mystic, bamboo lesser. It won't be any of that. This is a recessive gene with bamboo and that's what happens. So that makes it pretty hard to work with one of the more popular genes in being in piebald. Here's another one. You can see a couple little marks on it. There's one near, you know, its upper back. You've got a little bit of white on its head, but this is an all white snake mostly. That's bamboo piebald. This person also says it, it's a possible ultramel. With that being said, I am trying 
to do bamboo pied anyway. Now, why would I do that even though it creates mostly an all white snake or a snake with maybe just a head pattern? When I was early on, I spent a lot of money um, and bought breeders. And they're still with me to this day. I bought uh, pied at the time, maybe it was a het albino. And then I bought a pied head albino. With the pied head albino, I bred that to the male, which so I could get albino pieds, and I did. But the other one, I tried breeding, and for some reason they just they just didn't work out. They would not. I never caught them pairing. So later on, entered this guy. I acquired him. He is a alpha male. This guy is a stud. He will lock anything. Being as it that I had very few options, I bred him to the visual pied. And what I got were a bunch of stuff, but it was all het pied, including a couple clones of him that were females. And they were my first snakes, some of my first snakes. I believe one of them is a bamboo lemon blast. In fact, I know one of them is a bamboo lemon blast, but I started to think usually when you breed pinstripe into a pied, they get more pattern. Pinstripe pieds have more pattern. Anchi pieds, they get a lot of pattern. And in some cases, they're a pied where the only way you can tell is if you've got an eye for pied um, and they have the pattern and then they have the belly, or the, the traditional pied belly, or maybe they'll have a few little things or they'll be very low white. Let's just say it that way. That's, that's the easy way to say it. So I acquired um, a male, an Anchi pied. Um, I think he's got something else in there too. And I actually got that from Dave Kaufman himself. So. I'm gonna take a stab since I already kind of went into it when I was a little bit less experienced and it's probably not gonna work out. I'm probably gonna get a mostly, maybe slightly more patterned, very white pied, which maybe it'll have its head, maybe it'll do something, but maybe, maybe it'll be something really, really cool. And I don't think anybody's done it yet. So I'll probably be reporting on a snake that's mostly all white, um, but you never know. and. I kind of just happened into that. I'm a little too far in it to stop now. Um, I have what, like I said, I believe a, a pinstripe bamboo het pied and a bamboo lemon blast het pied. So why not just go with it? I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, you can actually check out our last video right here.